Hi from Canada. It's unbelievable, but the majority of the beginners and intermediate mixers actually start EQing from sweep technique where you can find some bad frequencies, or people apply some specific curve related to particular instruments, or they apply some presets. And it's really wrong. Today I'm gonna show you why, but most importantly I'm gonna show you three other steps which you should actually take. You know in the modern world everybody wants to get information immediately, but I guarantee if you're gonna watch all 15 minutes of this video, it will save you a lot of years and potentially will change the whole approach to your EQing and you're gonna get much better results. By the way guys, the cool thing is you can take one free trial class of one of the most powerful audio production courses. It's a very crafted system 9 months online. You will be connected to a real class with people who are taking this course right now so you can see how exactly we study. If you enroll, I take monthly payments only. Hundreds of students have graduated over the last 8 years. As a bonus, it has unique over checking sessions where I open your real projects comparing them to the best sounding songs of all time. And I don't just comment, I show you mistakes, settings and how to make decisions. The information about me, my course and 240 reviews are in the first pinned comment or in the description of this video. But instead of reading, I offer you a better way. Just get a free trial class. Because nobody knows better than you what works for you. And ask for the course details in email. How to contact me to get a free trial class, you can find in the first pin comment or in the description or on the screen. Let's choose some instrument which we're gonna be using as a main example. This is a bit pre-mixed project, let's make sure it sounds on the same page with professional top-end sounding mixes, so this is our reference. Wait for the second half of this video where I'm gonna show you exactly what you should do with equalizers. But to understand what's really wrong with the queuing, you first of all should understand what not to do. So it's really important what I'm gonna show you right now. So please pay attention to those mistakes as well. I like to challenge myself because showing this example, let's say based on something obvious like kick or vocal, it would be too obvious. Let's take one of those like middle instruments which is in the mix. We're gonna be working with this piano and I'm gonna get rid of processing which I already applied on this piano. I already did something what people don't even do, they don't analyze their instruments, they instantly go and try to change something in it. For example, one of the very common techniques people apply is a sweep technique. By the way, I have separate video about sweep technique mistakes and uh, I'm gonna leave it in the first pin comment and in the description, check it out after this video for example. But anyway, let me give you some extra point about sweep technique. Let's just concentrate, let's say, on the first note of this piano. You boost some frequency, like really a lot and you do it very narrow. You know, and people would say, oh my god, this frequency is so bad, let's cut this frequency, you know. Put new point and you continue sweeping. And now it's a bit better, right? It's not so boomy, not so humming, and you say, yes, this frequency kind of more, like, better than the one which we cut. So it seems like nothing wrong with these frequencies, we continue. It's also really bad, oh my god, it's so humming, it's like, woo, like, fixing bad frequencies, right? But why this frequency sounded so bad? is because of you just made them too loud. Obviously they sound bad. If you live in an apartment, even your neighbors, they will be banging on your wall saying, oh my god, cut this frequency immediately because we don't like it. Your neighbor's dogs will be woof woof. They will not like it as well because you boosted it by 30 decibels. Fundamental tone. Is this one around 130 Hz. Second harmonic of it is 260. And you also didn't like it with the sweep technique. And next frequency which you don't didn't like is 390. And you know what? 390 is just third harmonic of this note. So it's basically the whole structure of your instrument. So you basically get rid of everything you have in your instrument. Double check this picture. These frequencies don't sound as bad until you boost them by 30 decibels, don't you think? <laughs> potato vegetable is, is not so bad vegetable until you eat 300 kilograms of potatoes. And you believe those frequencies in between this, let's say, region. Between 130 and 260, this piano just simply don't have almost anything over there. So by boosting those frequencies by 30 decibels, you still don't have anything. That's why those frequencies are that good. Frequencies that we didn't cut. 
were sounding good with 30 decibels of boost, not because of those frequencies sound good, it's just because of you just simply don't have any frequencies over there. Fundamental tone, second harmonic, third harmonic, and you made them all cut just because of you didn't like how they sounded with 30 decibels of boost. Sweep technique actually is very powerful and you can use it, but not like that. There is the other approach. You can check the video on it. Second move, which potentially can be wrong, is applying presets. When you have this piano, you can of course apply some equalizer, you can apply some preset from this equalizer, and potentially it may improve the sound of your piano, but let's be honest, it's not real audio engineering. Because it's not really like you craft the instrument, you just like, hey, let's apply it, and who knows, maybe, maybe it will sound better, you know. Or you apply it, and then it doesn't even sound better, but you try to convince yourself that it sounds better. Now I want to faster go to the main point of this video, and in the end of this video we're gonna come back to presets, and I'm gonna show you how those fancy plugins from different manufacturers or even famous audio engineers who created those presets, how their presets just simply absolutely don't work, let's say, for this piano in this mix. By the way, I'm gonna be posting new unique videos during this spring and summer, so if you don't want to miss those, subscribe and hit the bell notification button. Maybe you already have proper balance or proper frequency structure of your instrument, but the guy who created the preset that didn't have this particular proper structure on their instrument of the same kind. So you improve something what really shouldn't be improved, or maybe even worse, you already have something good, but with those extra adjustments, you're gonna make it worse. By the way, don't you think it's a mid-range piano, right? It doesn't have too low notes, and doesn't have too high notes on this piano. Let's be honest, if your piano is like this, why you should apply a preset which was made for piano which sounded like this? If your piano play higher frequencies, it could be totally different preset. Just choosing general presets, like, this is the preset for piano, it would be a questionable approach. Third option is applying specific curve related to the instrument. I checked this famous mixer and this guy preferred to apply this curve on pianos or this curve for vocals or this curve for the kicks. You trust this guy and this guy says, yeah, I boost these high frequencies on pianos. The problem is your piano may already have those high frequencies more than enough. Secondly, your High frequencies potentially may have, let's say, noise, and by boosting those frequencies up, you don't get any benefits in terms of, like, openness or clarity, but you get just noisier piano. Another example, you can overlap, actually, frequencies of the other instruments in the mix. So by boosting some frequencies, you can mask other instruments in the mix. Now the best part of this video, I'm gonna explain what exactly you should do. The most important step before any equalization, you need to understand what functional nuances your instrument has, what is made of, and how manipulations of those different ranges potentially may change the sound of your instrument. First of all, the top-end audio engineer can do it with the, with the ears. To make it just a bit simpler explained, I'm gonna show you this based on the frequency analyzer. I see a fundamental tone of those notes are relatively low, and I see what range it occupies. We have second harmonic, we have third harmonic, and so on particular balance of those overtones, how it modifies the tone of your piano. What it really means that every next harmonic looks like higher and higher and higher on this instrument. You should understand what frequency ranges those harmonics occupy, how those ranges sound, and what happens if you boost or cut those frequencies, if you make them louder and quieter, how it affects the instrument itself and how it affects the balance between this piano and all other instruments in this mix. So this little peak, little overtone over here below the fundamental tone, this is the resonance of this acoustic instrument called piano. And again, you should ask yourself, what happens if I boost it? What happens if I cut it? How I can modify the sound of this piano and how it affects the whole balance between piano and other instruments in the mix? From 2K to 5K, we have many loud overtones. Strings inside of acoustic piano are metallic. If you boost it, you can exaggerate it and you can make it like more pronounced. If you cut it, you make it like, let's say, more smooth and warm and everything like that. So. It's another functional aspect of this instrument. A lot of people just trying to find some bad frequencies, other people just apply some random curve, which may be suitable or not suitable for your instrument, or you just choose preset. You know, instead, you should first of all understand functionalities of your instrument. Of course, I exaggerate much more than you would do it in a mix, but you can hear it. Much more aggressive, so-called hard piano. Like, eh, eh, and before it was, more like, uh, uh, 
you know, like more like felt piano. And this is what you th should think about when you work with equalizer. Those hammers like hitting those strings and strings vibrate. Hammer noise actually always present in properly recorded acoustic piano. This piano actually has it. I'm gonna exaggerate some of those frequencies. Fundamental tone of these hammers, which kind of like blended sound to the main sound of piano, is around 250 hertz. <laughs> Even though it's coincidentally at the same frequencies where you have the second harmonic, you still can hear it on the background of a sound. You know, so it's like... This sound, which sounds like... Over there, around 250 hertz, it's exactly... Uh, the noise of hammers on this piano. You really should think about what happens if I cut those frequencies, if I boost those frequencies. The thing is, hammers cannot be staying just at one frequency. They have the other aspects. Of course, I exaggerate too much, but you have rough idea what exactly we're dealing with because of this. So now, if I boost 900 Hz on this piano, it's wooden coloration, let's say. Listen to after note. So, listen to this. In the very end, listen to in the very end. Like fingers on the on the table. Something like this. So it's a hammer noise and wooden tone of those hammers around 900 Hz. Think by yourself, what I'm gonna do with these 900 Hz instead of just applying some random preset, you know, which gonna boost and drop some frequencies with no reason. And the same hammer noise, for example, is between 5k and 10k, it would be more like, uh, like detailization, those like higher frequency noises of these hammers. Listen to those high frequencies, it's all, it almost sounds like high head. Listen to the end. Right? So it's exactly what we mean by this like a uh, detailization or noisy aspects of those hammers. Relatively everything above 5k on this piano, it's a string noise like brightness. So originally piano sounds a bit muddy. So you boost all these highs. So it's a bit more like ah uh, instead of uh, if you boost it too much, too exaggerated level, of course I exaggerate much more than you would do, but you can hear the tendency by this. It would be almost like a air conditioner noise on a recording, almost like kind of all the time. This noise not only like bad sounding for the piano itself, but also this noise can just simply spoil, let's say, other instruments in the mix like hi-hats or cymbals. Also, when you work with equalizer, it's really important to understand what frequency mirror effect is. I have unique video on it. One movement, it never affects just frequency itself. I can boost particular frequencies, which wooden aspect of this piano, it's over here. Piano becomes too loud, so in the mix it's not appropriate volume at all. So I compensate volume of equalizer on the output and I make piano properly put again. I just showed you a second ago how it sounds more open when we boost, let's say, highs. Actually, those frequencies right now compromised. You already don't hear this openness of this piano. So, yes, you get maybe wooden sound of a piano, which you maybe enjoy, right? The problem is you just spoil other frequencies around by this move. It's called frequency mirror effect. I definitely recommend to find this link uh, in the first pin comment or in the description and check that video as well. It would be very useful. Second thing what you should do when you work with equalizers properly, you should recognize benefits of your instrument. Something in your instrument is already good. For example, originally in this piano, we already have more than enough low mid in this area called low mid frequencies. We have already kind of like large and fat sound in low mid frequencies on this piano. In the wrong way, you apply instantly some cure from some famous audio engineer or some preset. Those frequencies can be adjusted with no reason for your piano. So some preset can make those frequencies quieter or make those frequencies louder. They already sound warm but transparent enough. So these frequencies on this piano is really not about like making them much louder or making them much quieter. For this mix it's not needed. But your preset or curve which you always apply for piano, right? 
It can be spoiling effect for your piano. So you should recognize some nice things about your instrument which you already have in the sound of your instrument. Make sure you preserve good things about your instrument which you already have. Beginners and intermediate mixers for some reason think that your instrument is always wrong. You know, like some, like it's by default totally wrong and let's modify everything, let's change everything. You know what I mean? Equalizer is not just for improvements. Equalizer easily can spoil stuff. For example, if you want a couple of examples of spoiling effect for this piano, check it out. Some presets actually have some low boost. So you boost, let's say, some lows on this piano. Do you really think this piano needs some lows? Listen to how it sounds. It sounds just like... Recognize that you already have enough low end on this piano, which sounds amazing. It's still clear, but it's like fat enough already by default. So maybe let's not boost low frequencies on this piano. Some preset or curve may have some boost around 1k or whatever. If you apply something like this, you can make just honkier sound. Instead of just like ta ta, it sounds like ta 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 ta. It sounds annoying. It definitely doesn't work for this piano. Don't get me wrong. I don't mean it will be by 15 decibels. In a preset, it will be just like one or two dB maybe. But again, the question is, do you really believe your 1K is need to be boosted? Why? With no reason. No, you already have enough density in this region, you don't need to boost it. Other presets can do opposite. They may have some cut around these frequencies, exactly maybe to address some like nasal sounding pianos, because people who created those presets, they may be recorded pianos a bit awful, right? It sounds already a bit nasal, and they say, yeah, let's address it. So for their pianos it works, but for your piano this movement is not needed. Lifeless is kind of a bit kind of like... Uh, uh, it's boring, it becomes boring. It's just like... You know, so this movement for this piano doesn't work at all. On my course, we have very structured system, crafted system, where I explain every nuance, how to make decisions, specific guidelines, which clarify all those things together, and you start to be pretty happy because you're always in charge of your own sound. So third thing, what you should really know about equalization. Pros and cons, and particular characteristics of your equalizer. Let's say you decided to have a bit more body, you know, like more bottom end of this piano to make it, let's say, fatter. You, let's say, boost these frequencies. You can make this curve narrower, or you can make this curve wider. If you apply a wider filter, you should understand that you're gonna affect neighboring frequencies. And in this case, you should understand what neighboring frequencies and why it's wrong. So by boosting fundamental tone, you also exaggerate second harmonic and third harmonic, which makes those like muddy frequencies more pronounced. Secondly, uh, you boost what we already talked about, so-called uh, body resonance of this acoustic piano, around 78 Hz. I just kind of imitate what really happens to this piano around 78. Boom, boom. Strange boominess, very aggressive one. In the mix, it will be totally spoiling effect for your kick and bass. If you're gonna play this beat, let's say in a nightclub, which has like powerful subwoofers, it would be, oh my god, wall shaking and everybody just like, oh my god, what it was. It's not even a part of the music, it's some like artifact in the sound, you know what I mean? And when I do it like this, you're gonna exaggerate this overtone in this area, and you just simply make it like boomier, you know, with really no reason. So maybe it's better to boost these frequencies narrower, not to affect this frequency around 78 hertz. It again depends on what equalizer you have. For example, if, let's say, you have classic API EQ, it's a frequency selector switch, you put it at 150 and you boost with white switch. So when you do it with this equalizer, are you sure that you know what kind of filter curve this API equalizer has? For example, API has relatively wide curves, but not, let's say, as wide as, let's say, Neve 1073. Narrow boost on FAB filter like this, it's simply impossible to implement this curve by API equalizer. API would be much wider. If uh, I want to imagine how API equalizer works, and if you, let's say, very familiar with pull tech EQ, of course, uh, 150 is not available here, but let's say if I boost 300 Hz, right, by some amount, the bandwidth would be at 2. How commonly you use Pultec Equalizer and you specifically put this knob at 2. So this is what kind of curve uh, API Equalizer gives. 
Let's say we use this Brainworks plugin, you put 150 on it, you switch it to the bell mode, and you boost it by black band over here. But do you know how wide this filter is? It has 1.4Q. It would not be as wide as API, but it would be wider than this curve, which you can see right now on the screen. Now I can do the same thing with 9000 SSL, right? You know what? This Q is totally different. By default, it's 25 on this equalizer. So it would give you narrower curve than 4000 series. They claim it's the same, but it's not the same. At least it gives you narrower curve. Uh, SSL 4000 E series. I use blue band. I put 200. I boost it a bit. I can make it, of course, narrower. Uh, it still could be a bit wider than I use it over here on the FAB filter. But now the trick is, if you use this THD knob over here on the right side and you boost it or drop it, you actually can exaggerate third harmonic. Not the whole range will be boosted, but some of those overtones will be like more pronounced if you use this one. So you apply this saturation for the third harmonic with this little screw on this plugin, and you actually exaggerate third harmonic specifically. If you just simply switch from this Brainworks E to Brainworks G equalizer, and if you repeat exactly the same settings, 200 Hz, you boost it just a bit, you put this Q all the way to the left, you know what? This curve would be crazy wide. A lot of people have no idea about this, but in reality, G equalizer with this much gain, even with a very seems like narrow position on the Q parameter, still gives you enormously wide curve, which can be even wider than API curve. <laughs> I always, after this approach called critical thinking or no bullshit approach, where it's not just something like, oh, it's a legendary equalizer. I more prefer to know exactly what it does, you know, and what exactly going on inside of the instrument and how exactly you should mix it to really understand molecules of audio. You boost, let's say, high frequencies, what a lot of people prefer to do. You take this like 10K, you boost it with the red band like this. Basically, you're supposed to have curve like this, right? And actually, it would be absolutely not this curve like on FAB filter. The structure of this curve on FAB filter is very unique. You switch from E to G series equalizer, right? Or to Neve style equalizers. Your high boost actually will have so-called resonance. So you have this red curve, right? And a lot of people imagine that boosts look like this, right? So you just boost some frequencies above chosen point. In reality, with G SSL equalizer, your movement will be like this, then you're gonna have some actually cut in mid frequencies, and only then the curve will be stabilized. Ask yourself clearly, do you understand what this really means for your high frequency boost? What happens to the density, to the mid frequencies, to clarity, to definition, to the transient of your instruments? You know, it's crazy. You even should understand how phase is affected by all these equalizers. Type of a filter, and I'm not talking just like, oh, linear phase EQ or, or standard equalizer. No, it can be constant equalizer. It can be phase shifting equalizer. Different type of cores affect phase differently. You know what I mean? So it's it's really cool and when you know it, you know what I mean? But most importantly, it's not just for understanding. It's re it really what brings real quality to your mixes. Asking just something like, hey, what curves do you use over there? It really doesn't work in audio production. If you really want to make top-notch products, you really need to learn real audio engineering. As simple as that. So now let's check some presets of very famous plugins and let's check why those presets actually don't work. So this is a SLEQ, I have this equalizer over here. For example, it has piano presets. I'm gonna specifically mute compressor section because I don't want right now to hear influence how it affects its dynamics. Let's just check how it sounds uh, by equalizer section only. It creates a lot of honky mid-mid ranges, those like on this piano. This piano really doesn't need it, you know what I mean? Blue band and green band actually boost in relatively close frequencies, 1K and 1.5K. So we kind of have like double influence for those frequencies. 1073 equalizer signature preset. So let's listen to it. The whole low mid drop, you know, it affects not just some particular frequencies, it's literally the whole low mid range. Cut it even more so you can hear how it makes our sound more empty. It makes hollow sound, basically. Right? Like empty sounding. If, let's say, I'm gonna play a couple of other synthesizers in combination with this piano, those synthesizers will beat this piano. Piano will be masked by any other instrument in the mix. Uh, 
uh, bottom end boost, right? 110, and it's like boosted a bit. Without this equalizer, listen to the low end of this piano, it's tighter and clearer. With this equalizer, it's like boomy and overlapping with the bass. More like uh, this kind of like raw, you know, more like, like, uh, uh. Plugins has this piano preset called, if I keep dynamics, it just like pushes volume more, right? So it doesn't make too much difference here. I'm gonna mute the hi-hat. So you can hear how too much noisy elements of the hammer noises of this piano is exaggerated. Notice after each chord, we hear this like chord, shh, chord, shh, kind of. Why it's like this is because of they boosted 7k over here. Any frequencies around like 10k or 5k would do better job for the same task. Obviously, maybe when they created this preset, it was working for their piano. But for our piano, it just simply doesn't work. Piano attitude as well. Boo, boo. For mid band and for another mid band, also very wide curve for some reason. Enormously wide curves if you put Q in this position, which is wide side. So we have this pull tag. Let's say this preset called Punch and Presence. Even though, as you can see, we boosted 4K, it's simply not enough to compensate enormously exaggerated boost around lows. We have boost over here, as you can see, this one around 60. The, the problem with pull tech, pull tech equalizers have very long shelves. Uh, it's going like this, and it goes and goes and goes, and all these boomy frequencies around 78 and 150 where we have fundamental tone these frequencies will be like really exaggerated you have this like boominess because of this of course you have a 10 parameter engaged over here right a 10 a 10 gives you like a mid-range cut this mid-range cut just simply stays in much higher frequencies over there so it's not possible to affect mindiness by this choice 60 hertz on this equalizer so because of that you have too much boominess in this area so the question is why you really need to choose this preset if you just can start with the flat EQ flat pull tech, let's say, and then you really define what exactly you need to boost, what exactly you need to cut, what exactly parameters are already pretty good on your PN, on what you don't want to touch, and then you make proper decisions. The only question if you're able to make those decisions. This is why you need to have critical thinking mixing, like real mixing based on audio, based on what you hear, what you measure, instead of just like some fancy presets some, from some fancy equalizer. How about the W equalizer? Okay, it has piano preset. This equalizer absolutely doesn't work for our mix. Even without other synthesizers, if I put any other synthesizer to this mix, it will not be working at all. This piano has two elements, lower note, which is like POOM, and then chord, like POOM, POOM, POOM. This higher chord, I absolutely don't hear under tall synthesizers. It sounds only like POOM, and this like POOM is inaudible. Then another BOOM is very audible, and then like POOM is inaudible. You know what I mean? Why it's like that? Because this equalizer loses the whole aspects of those mid chords. This 1K, which is dropped over here, is really making these chords lost in the mix. The other problem, it has this boost around low frequencies, and we unfortunately boost exactly 678 Hz, which I point out as a boominess of this piano, and we boost this boominess, and we make this piano just totally muddy and boomy in the mix. So as you can see, it's two wrong movements on these presets at the same time, but I don't mean it's wrong for absolutely every piano, it's wrong just for our piano. So presets don't make sense. Real critical thinking mixing, this is what makes sense. If you're interested in really serious audio production education, just send me an email, take a free trial class, check it out how it works, you will be connected to the real class with my students who are taking this course right now, so you can decide. This course relatively affordable, for the same amount of money you can buy one medium microphone, three, four plugins, pair of average monitors, but those things, those purchases don't guarantee any results. This course guarantees results. Just check it out, start with the free trial class. How to contact me you can see on the screen or in the description of this video or in the first pinned comment.